Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number 12. Today I'm going to show you how to speed up soft body simulations by 100x. Given a high resolution visual mesh, the idea is to create a lower resolution tetrahedral simulation mesh that still captures all the desired motions and then embed the visual mesh in the simulation mesh. Let's start. As usual for the slides and demos, have a look at my webpage at www.matthiasmuller.info slash 10 minute physics. So here we have a surface mesh of 60,000 triangles. And let's say we want to simulate this as a soft body. What we can do is tetrahedralize the volume surrounded by this surface mesh. However, with 60,000 triangles, we probably get something like 300,000 tetrahedra, which of course yields a very slow simulation. Now there's a key observation to speed up the simulation. The essential motion of this dragon can be captured with a very low resolution simulation mesh. So here I use only 3000 tetrahedra. You could probably go even lower. There are two main solutions to reduce the complexity of a simulation. The first one is model reduction. Here we start with a high resolution tetrahedral mesh. Then we decompose the system matrix into eigenmodes, which are basically deformation patterns. Then we select the K most important deformation patterns only. The model is mathematically involved, especially for nonlinear deformations and for collision handling. It is also highly non-trivial to implement. I will explain to you the method of surface embedding. We first create a feature aware decimated surface of the input mesh, for instance with Blender. Then we tetrahedralize the simplified surface. I will show how to do this in a later tutorial. This yields a lower resolution tetrahedral mesh. Then we embed the visual mesh in the volumetric mesh and I will show you how to do this in this tutorial. This method is very simple to implement as you will see. The idea is as follows. Let's say we have a vertex of the visual mesh and a tetrahedron that encloses it. We want the vertex V to move with the surrounding tetrahedron. We can do this by expressing V as a weighted sum of P1, P2, P3 and P4, the particles adjacent to the tetrahedron. These scalar values are called the barycentric coordinates of V. They are unique for four points not contained in a plane. Now the question is, given the tetrahedron with adjacent particles P1, P2, P3 and P4 and the vertex coordinate V, how do we compute the barycentric coordinates? First, we observe that we can move all the points V, P1, P2, P3 and P4 by the same amount without changing the result. So here I subtract P4 from all these points. The result is that the last term drops out because we have P4 minus P4, which is zero. This means that we are left with only three unknowns. We can put these three scalar values into one three-dimensional vector B. We can also define a matrix P with the columns P1 minus P4, P2 minus P4 and P3 minus P4. Now we can write this equation here in a more compact way. It's now also possible to solve for the vector B. What we have to do is invert the matrix P and multiply it by V minus P4. Now we only have the first three barycentric coordinates to derive P4. We use the translated equation here. If we move P4 to the other side and multiply out these terms, we get this form here. As you can see, the scalar in front of P4 is 1 minus B1 minus B2 minus B3, which is B4. Barycentric coordinates have some interesting properties. For instance, they sum to 1. We can easily see this from this equation here by moving B4 to the other side. Also, for all the points in the tetrahedron, and only for them, all the four barycentric coordinates are greater or equal to zero. For points outside the tetrahedron, the interpolation still works, but it might introduce potential artifacts. I will show how to solve this problem in an upcoming tutorial. We can also define a barycentric distance of a point to a tetrahedron. I define it as the maximum value of the negative barycentric coordinates. As you can see, the distance is negative if the point is inside the tetrahedron and positive if it's outside. If a vertex is not contained in any tetrahedron, we attach it to the tetrahedron with the smallest distance. Before the simulation starts, we have to compute all the barycentric coordinates of all the vertices of the visual mesh. To do this, we store a value dmin with each vertex and initialize it with infinity. Then we store all the vertices in a hash grid. For each tetrahedron, we compute an inflated bounding box. 
we use this to query the vertex hash. For each vertex returned by the query, we check whether the corresponding value dmin is smaller than zero. If so, we already found the containing tetrahedron. If not, we compute the barycentric coordinates of the returned vertex with respect to the current tetrahedron, d. If d is smaller than the dmin value of the vertex, we overwrite dmin and replace the attachment. This process is fast enough so we can do it on the fly before each simulation. So let's implement this. This demo is an extension of the demo we wrote in tutorial number 10 about soft body simulation. I also added the hash class we wrote in tutorial number 11. At the very bottom of the file we have the meshes. First, the tetrahedral mesh with its vertices. Here you see the indices of the tetrahedra. Four consecutive numbers define one tetrahedron. We also have the edge indices of the tetrahedra for visualization. Here is the definition of the visual mesh. First we have the vertices. And finally the indices of the triangles. I compute the barycentric coordinates of all vertices in a method of the class softbody. Here I first create a hash for all the visual vertices. Then I define the mindist array and fill it with number.maximum value. Next I run through all the tetrahedra. Instead of computing a bounding box as mentioned in the slides, I actually compute a bounding sphere. I use it to query the hash. Before iterating through all the vertices returned by the hash, I compute the inverse of the matrix P. If mean distance of the current vertex is smaller or equal to zero, we know that we already found the surrounding tetrahedron. Otherwise we compute the barycentric coordinates and the new distance. If the new distance is smaller than the min distance, we update the min distance and override the scanning information. After each time step we call update visual mesh, which does the skinning. We iterate through all the visual vertices. First we get the tetrahedral number the vertex is attached to. Then we read the barycentric coordinates. Next we get the indices of all the particles adjacent to the tetrahedron and compute the weighted sum using the positions of the particles adjacent to the tetrahedron. So here is our final demo. As you can see the mesh with almost 60,000 triangles simulates very fast. We also have all the necessary deformation modes. I can show the tetrahedral mesh here. Since we're using the method I presented in tutorial number 10, the simulation is also unbreakable. This concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.